Hi guys. Um, so as you can see, I have a different background now. I just um, escaped to my room and I've come to a place where there's aircon because it is currently, well, it's supposed to be hitting 42 today. Um, summer's finally actually finally come to Melbourne and it's just going to be a complete like heat zone thing for the rest of this week. So yes, today though, I will be doing my book reviews for the books that I read in about a books readathon. There were only read three, so I figured it would be easier to just do a um, you know collective book review video as opposed to doing them one by one because then it will take too long and I figure out how, when to upload it, yada yada yada, um, when I have other videos to film as well. But if you did read my if you did watch my video for the wrap-up of the readathon, you will know that I finished Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, 172 Hours on the Moon by Johanna Stard, and Wonder by RJ Palacio. I am, I did, well, I am in the middle of The Girl Who Circumnavigated a Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine and Volante, but um, I still have like at least 80 pages of that left, and I figured I'll just do a review on that on its own. Um, probably because it deserves one as well. But let's get straight into these ones. All of these books I have been introduced to over BookTube. Um, so I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have already heard about it, heard of like lots of booktubers talk about it, you know, have their own views and thoughts, but these are going to be my own views and thoughts about it. Um I certainly enjoyed all three of them really like quite a lot and I think now I know why all the booktubers love them. So yeah. First up is Eleanor Parker, Rainbow Rowell, and this is a um, young adult, I would say contemporary, contemporary, so it's romantic. Um, it's set during the 90s, I'm going to assume, and it's about this girl named Eleanor, um, and she moves into a new school, but she stands out so much because of her bright red curly hair and to the ways that she the way that she dresses up, so she was really mis mismatched clothing. Um, and on the bus ride home, she struggles to find a seat. So um, one, so one of the boys who um, takes the bus regularly tells her to sit down next to him and to you know stop embarrassing herself. And that boy is Park, and he is actually um, half Asian, and I didn't realize that <laughs> until afterwards. Um, and he sits at the back of the bus and he just wears black all the time, always listens to music with his headphones in. He's certainly part of the popular group. Um, he belongs there. He doesn't necessarily con converse with them all the time, but he's not an outsider, um, whereas Eleanor is deemed an outsider like straight at the beginning. And essentially it just follows them and how they begin begin to, you know, um, develop a friendship and then it, it revol well, evolves into a sort of um, romance and it's quite interesting. I would have to say this was really a really really easy read. It was really cute. Um, it's definitely some bits were quite emotional. I it's, it's quite heavy actually for a young adult novel. You don't really get a lot of those um, feelings in other romance books I'm going to assume. Uh, with the characters I don't think I liked well I don't I liked both of them but I don't think they grew I grew attached to them. They were they just served the point and that was it. It moved quite fast. It, you know, there were some bits where we had to fill in ourselves, but it wasn't hard to imagine what was going on during that time. Um, the plot, well, the view switches up from Eleanor to um, Park and then back to Eleanor. So you get, you know, um, each person's sort of perspective about the relationship, how they feel about each other, um, what are their worries and, and, um, what are they looking forward to sort of thing so it's not one-sided which I think works well because I feel like with the two-sided view you get a lot more out of it um, becomes a lot more realistic I think a lot of people would say that their relationship isn't very realistic just because of how they've developed it um, you know but at the same time they're still in high school they're not that old and I understand that um, young love isn't supposed to be really logical like and I think that's that's how um, Roel really succeeded in her novel, the fact that she could portray that sort of irrational um, first love feeling. And the ending, I think, was perfect for that um, because 
and I don't want to ruin it to, for you guys, but um, I just think it really um, honed down on the fact that, you know, your first love will always be your first love, no matter what, and um, it just, and despite the fact that you might never be with them um, later in life, they they still make a really good impact on you, like, like a really great impact on you. So, I think that's what this story left um, with me, which I that's why I think I really enjoyed it, not because of the characters, although they did make um, the, the novel, but because of the message, the meaning. Um, and just the heartwarming plotline to it. I had really a lot of squeal moments in there. I was like giggly after a while, but I really do recommend it if you were looking for a like, cute, you know, um, nostalgic read. Definitely check this one out. Then I read Wonder by RJ Playshow, and this is more of a middle grade book um, revolving around this character named August who has a deformity with his um, features, or his facial features, and he um, is constant, well, he ends up being homeschooled at home um, so he's always had his family to protect him but one day his parents decide to make him go to school and because of how he's um, seen other people treat him you know the looks and stuff he gets really scared but he decides to go and do it and it's just um, a story about you know him going to school for the first time and that just the entire year and it was a beautiful beautiful book I think August was an amazing character. I loved every single character in this story. Actually, um, they were they all had a really different characteristic to them, but they all resonated really well with me. Especially August's sister Vi, because because like she's the older sister, um, and August has this deformity with him. His her parents are always you know looking to um, sort of base their stuff around August and then don't really pay attention a lot to Vi and she um, takes that really well. She knows that August is always going to be priority but at the same time I really feel for her because um, she really does need that nurturing care since she's only just started high school or is it, or well, high school for Australia is G7. I think they call it middle school I think, junior high, something like that. Um, but yeah and all the characters, all the like classmates that August meets in school certainly don't take very well to him. You expect that, but there are a couple of people who are very, very special. The novel um, goes through a lot of points, like a lot of views, not just August by itself. Um, there's August by a couple of his friends, um, by his boyfriend, which I think is cute. Um, and it makes for a really interesting read because, like I said, when I sympathise with Vi because I couldn't see how she felt, um, I could also, you know, uh, I managed to like all of the characters because of that, um, which is weird because I didn't like enjoy the characters in Eleanor and Park as much, even though I could see their point of view. I don't know, it was different, um, but I think it worked really well because I was sort of getting sort of getting bored with August's view at the time, um, you know, because because he already has that deformity. You like basically the readers are put into that situation where you are supposed to sympathise with him, but at the same time, I felt like. If you're just reading from his point of view, you just see that one-sided thing, and maybe you don't know if it's going to be if it's true or not. But because you have other views to back it up, it works a lot better. And I think it was quite realistic, just how August, you know, ended up um, belonging to that school, how he did his classes, yada yada yada, and it made me feel like I, um, I don't know, it made me feel like there is a lot more to the world. Well, there's a lot more to the person, actually, um, than what you can see on the outside. And I think that was a great read, especially I want, like, younger kids who read this book. I hope that I hope that it gives them a really big impact. I told my brother to read this. Um, he's going into high school next year. And I think he'll enjoy it. Much like I enjoyed it. And lastly, I read 172 Hours on the Moon by Johannes Dad. And this is a sci-fi novel, um, and I heard a lot about this in the booktube community last year. I've never really read a lot of sci-fi, you know, all that Star Wars stuff. I didn't really um, think it would interest me, but I still decided to go ahead and read it. Um, I was really sort of apprehensive about how I would take it. It's definitely, the I think the blurb at the back doesn't really do the book justice. It doesn't make like when I read it, it didn't make it sound that interesting. Um, so basically, 
you know, NASA's has, NASA has developed this project um, and it takes them a while to get it up and, and running, I think. So um, you get introduced to the project in 2010 and then you skip to 2018. So it takes eight years for them to develop this um, project and it's um, where they select three teenagers to go on a trip to the outer space with a couple of other astronauts and um, they go to the moon to do or to collect these things but really NASA has a um, sort of like uh, uh, NASA has a different plan than that and it feels really sinister already you get to you um, get straight into the story as soon as you pass over the first three pages um, that explains the project basically and you get to meet the three teenagers who will win you know they will because those are only three those are the only three teenagers that are basically introduced in the story besides their friends but you know because it's their point of view this book swaps around so the three teenagers um each have like like the chapters vary in the view so the three teenagers a couple of the um astronauts and this old man in this um nursing home and you understand why he has a big impact on the on, um book as well the cover certainly um, gives a lot out, well, gives a lot um, of the plot out. You don't really understand until you start reading it though, but it does look quite, you know, if you can really notice that, then I think you can tell what it's about. But yeah, so they, so they end up onto the moon. Um, it's this massive thing and like, it's essentially like that, like um, Neil Armstrong, you know, going to the moon once again. It's 2018 though, so it's only four years from now. Um, so the technology isn't that much different to us. Certainly there's a lot of more things that I, um, that have been a lot more developed. But I think the world building overall, overall was quite good. There wasn't anything that was too extraordinary, like you know, um, jetpacks and yada, yada, yada. In terms of writing, I felt like it was a little dry. Um, it got it picked up in the mo in the tense bits certainly, but all the views and stuff like I felt like it was just one person narrating um, despite the different views, and that there wasn't much to like you didn't get a lot of the characters you know back. Hmm, I got that. <laughs> you didn't get a lot of the characters sort of background. You don't really get to know them a lot, so that's why I sort of feel felt detached um, from them. You also don't. There's also this romance that blossoms and it's not really realistic. I just felt like I was just shoved in there for the the fun of it, um, which was really weird and I couldn't really care less about that. What I really, really liked though was the mystery part of this, the really sort of horror aspect to it. It really did give me shivers. Um, the ending was superb. It really did change my view on this book I was reading it and I was about to finish it and I thought it was just gonna be a book that was good you know not very like not one of the best books I've read but now that I finished it I decided that it's like really really good um just because the ending blew my mind basically and I'm and I and I like it when there's an ending that keeps me i um, sort of thinking about it even days afterwards um and that I want to recommend to my friends to read so that we can discuss it and this is one of the books that I have um wanted my friends to read already you have to push on basically um it makes it, the book has like a number of illustrations which makes things a lot more interesting so you get things like the um i'm trying to find it you get things like um photos of when they're about to land on the moon and obviously the photos are probably from um taken when there was actual trips to the moon you get like the setting of their um was it the place that they stay in in the moon um which makes it a lot easier to visualize in your mind so i like that but oh in general i think this created the best suspense that there's sort of like terrifying feeling in myself um you don't really understand what's going on until the very very end and i think it's worth reading until that um ending it gave me the chills so much it was actually really freaky <laughs> but you know, do read it and have a big discussion with friends who have read it um, because I think it's worth it. Those are all the books that I read 
for the Battle Book Readathon. Um, I enjoyed all of them very much. And if you haven't read them, then tell me what you liked most about them or what you didn't like about them. Or if you are planning to read it, then, you know, um, tell me that as well. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a great day. You know, if you're in Australia, well, if you're somewhere in the sun, then stay cool and dry and hydrated. If you're experiencing the cold, and keep warm and don't get frostbite. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alright then, see you guys later, bye!